What is up, brand builders? In today's video, I'm going to be sharing the top three product research techniques for finding profitable products to private label and sell on Amazon because I know a lot of people struggle with product research, finding a winning product, and I don't want you to be one of those people. And so the first technique we are going to be going over is the new releases method. So I'm gonna click on this new releases tab here. It's gonna take me to a page where we can see a bunch of hot new releases that have low reviews, high demand, high sales velocity. And a couple of things we're gonna to want to pay attention to here are, number one, I'm in Google Chrome, the Google Chrome web browser. I'm signed out of my account. And also I have a product research tool. In this video, I'm gonna be mostly using Jungle Scout, all right? And so there are a lot of categories we can look at over here. What I would recommend is looking by department on this left sidebar over here. And one of the biggest categories with the most opportunity is home and kitchen if you think about it home and kitchen literally that's any product that can go inside your house which pretty much everything you buy does so there's a lot of products coming to the market every single day every single week every single month with high amount of opportunity like this vegetable chopper looks like it's already ranked number 13 only has 19 reviews meaning definitely has a lot of demand low competition and so we can do a bunch of different things. We can just look directly here. We can niche down even further, but I'm gonna pop open Jungle Scout and see what it's saying about the data on this page. All right, so we have Jungle Scout open. We are on this page. We're looking at all the new releases, and now we're gonna be able to see all this information. So I'm gonna scroll down and see, yes, as I suspected, this vegetable chopper here, $24.99 price point, about 1,879 estimated monthly sales and about $46,956 in estimated monthly revenue. Now, one thing I do notice is Jungle Scout tends to estimate the revenue on the higher side. If you use something like Helium 10, AMZ Scout, sometimes they'll show you lower numbers. So what you can sometimes do is just take the difference or just look at this with a grain of salt and be like, all right, but usually that doesn't matter too much. Now, let's talk about what matters for all of these data points and all these analytics. So we can see here on the left-hand side, the product name, we can see the brand name, the price, and what I'm looking at, I'm initially looking at what the product type is. So if you follow my channel for any amount of time, I talk about the backpack method, finding simple, small, light products that are harmless, uh, that have a good potential for profit, have high demand and low competition. So if we look at something like these dish soap dispenser with sponge holder kits, right? These are just sponges with some type of a plastic piece that holds them and that's very simple very hard for this product to go wrong very unlikely for customers to hurt themselves or this product to be damaged in shipping and it's super light super small so that will be lower risk for you for buying inventory in bulk for private labeling it with a brand and custom packaging getting it shipped to the warehouse and selling it for profit so besides for the product type what else am i looking at well i'm looking at the price i don't want to sell products for anything less than twenty dollars because usually the profit isn't there so this 12 pack of rug grippers is ten dollars likely they're making 50 cents a dollar profit per sale if that and you know it's up to you but really personally i don't think this is worth it unless you're selling like tens of thousands a month you're not going to make much profit and if you're wondering why i'm sounding so nasal i'm sorry i'm getting over a cold i'm doing the best i can but besides for price what do we look at i look for monthly sales i want to see at least 300 plus sales per month which breaks down to 10 per day uh, we look at it kind of goes hand in hand with monthly revenue and then the other big factor i look at is ratings so reviews how many reviews they have this this is how we gauge the competition so if we look down here at this vegetable chopper again it only has 19 ratings and so uh, for products with less than 300 or so reviews, that's virtually no competition. And even if they do have a few hundred reviews, that just shows that like for this solar bug zapper right here, shows that it does have demand, it does have good reviews, meaning the product's decent, and that kind of validates the idea. What you don't want to find and sell are products that have thousands and thousands of reviews. So like this uh, portable air conditioner, 
this particular one has almost a thousand reviews. When you get up to that point where, you know, competitors have thousands of reviews or tens of thousands of reviews, that's something you want to stay away from. So if I scroll over here even more, uh, we can look at a bunch of other things like net fees, like uh, sales rank, like LQS, listing quality score on a scale of one to 10. Uh, we can see the seller type. FBA, so fulfillment by Amazon or FBM, fulfillment by merchant, what type of uh, channel they are using to sell and fulfill the products. And so some of these don't really matter. Like I hardly ever look at net fees and, and you can kind of tell it. Jungle Scout isn't even showing them here. Uh, rank, that doesn't really matter to me too, too much. Best selling rank because it's different for every category. Uh, some people say, you know, look for products that are ranked under 20,000. That's like the sweet spot, like 10 to 20,000. But but I usually look at sales and reviews more heavily than the rank, all right? LQS, there's a strategy where you can look for products that have low listing quality score. So this one, a six out of 10 here, um, this garden hose, there's a strategy where you can say, all right, well, some of these sellers have poor ratings. They have, you know, bad images. They have an overall non-optimized listing with a bad title, only a few bullet points, and you can come in there and do a better job and compete and take up some market share. That kind of was what I did with my first product, but uh, you know that's not something I really look at too closely. It does matter what category the product is under. What you wanna make sure is that if you're gonna launch a product and you're trying to list it in a certain category that either the uh, category is not gated because you might need approval to list that product and sell it on Amazon and then it's not a restricted item. So there is a list if you Google restricted products on Amazon, certain things you can't sell or need approval, you're gonna to wanna to be familiar with that. So what I would recommend is going kind of case by case, looking at each one of these individual products, take a look at what the product type is, look at the monthly sales, look at the amount of reviews and ratings and dig a little bit deeper. You might even wanna open up the listing so if we go up to that vegetable chopper that I liked if I click on the image here we can see the product listing we can see what brand it is being sold under we can see all the details on the product we can get a better idea for what it is and then what I would recommend actually is copying these keywords and pasting them in the search bar to look at the overall market because you might just see one instance all right this product selling well but what about all the competitors, how we're gonna be able to do against them. All right, the next method we're gonna talk about is a database, the database method. Now I'm in Jungle Scout and it, under their product research tab, I'm looking at the product database. So we're gonna be able to select multiple categories and additional filters and we'll be able to hit a search and it'll pick up all of the products related to um, what our filters are so that we can get a pretty tight knit kind of refined search for finding products with good potential. All right, so the parameters I would recommend looking at, you can either expand or contract these based off of what you're seeing. Uh, I'm looking at home and kitchen, kitchen and dining, office products and arts, crafts and sewing. I am looking at products priced between $20 and $50, so we have good room for profit, but it's not so highly priced that people need to think about it. Um, we're looking at products that have 300 reviews or fewer. We're looking at products that are getting at least 300 sales and a maximum of 1,000 sales per month. So I'm going to hit search, and it's going to pick up all the products related to um, this query. So here we go. We are seeing uh, 50 out of 7,675 products that fit this criteria we're seeing um, we're seeing yarn we're seeing remotes we're seeing these wooden sheets and so all of these products will fit what we put in i actually think i forgot to mention um maybe i did mention but we're looking at products that are two pounds or lighter and so the reason for that is lighter, smaller products have lower fees, are cheaper to source, and will just be lower risk for you to get started ordering, let's say, 300 units, putting your customized logo and packaging on the product, having it shipped to Amazon and start selling. So what you're going to want to do is look through this list. I would highly recommend like keeping a notebook or notes on your phone uh, and looking through these products and seeing anything you think has potential and writing that down, possibly being able to circle back to it later. So here I'm seeing these glassine envelopes measuring four and a half by 10 and three eighths inches. Uh, I'm seeing that the main image is absolutely horrible, but somehow they're getting almost 10,000 a month in revenue, 300 sales per month. Price is good, 2889. Uh, they only have nine reviews, which is insane. And it's a half a pound product. And I can see, well, actually they have a lot of different variations and some of them are doing pretty good. So this would be a super easy product to 
customize, put some custom packaging. You see how they have their brand name. It's a terrible job of private labeling, just their brand name there guard house if they were to get colorful packaging if they were to get a cool logo uh, if they were to look at some of the maybe the negative reviews of some of the other products um, fix that maybe offer more quantity different sizes different shapes they could offer literally endless amounts of variations for these uh, envelopes and it's a small simple light product has good demand low competition and that way you'd be able to carve out a nice chunk of profit in this particular niche. All right, and the third and final product research technique I wanna talk about is called the alphabet soup method. And how this works is up in the search bar, I like to type in an adjective, uh, something that's very broad that a lot of products could be under. So let's say silicone, wooden, plastic, disposable, anything like that. So if we type in silicone, uh, we have that initial keyword there and then playing alphabet soup. So going down the list of A and seeing what pops up, silicone air fryer liners, okay? Going down next to B, seeing what pops up and continuing down until you see something. Ideally, you don't know what it is and you could take a further look. So something you wanna know is usually the products up here at the top of this search box are gonna be higher in uh, search volume and the ones lower are going to have less search volume. So I'm just literally going to pick anything. Let's look at the silicone baking pan. And so what we do is for this method, we start with this alphabet soup method. Now, no one else is looking at this. This isn't looking at new releases. This is not looking at any database. So this is completely random. And so you're going to get ideas that no one else has, but we do not end here. We don't just say, oh, silicone baking mats. What you want to do is look at some of the top seven sellers here. So this one, Amazon's choice, I will click into it. And then we're going to combine another product research method I call the rabbit hole method. So looking at an initial listing and then actually coming over here under the buy now button, we're going to look at who it's sold by. So it's shipped from Amazon uh, and then it's sold by do, do smile. So if we click on that seller name, then we're going to see, um, a little bit of their information. Now this is not their storefront. If we look at their storefront, we're gonna get different info, but we actually wanna scroll down. Um, we wanna look at see all their products. So we're gonna click on this. And now we can see every single product this seller account is selling. They have 12 results, they have one brand. And I noticed it was a Chinese seller and sometimes they have funny names. So this would sound like Ass Chef. Not sure what they were thinking there, but we're gonna see all their products that they're selling. And what you're gonna notice is this particular seller is definitely in a single niche, the silicone bakeware. So what we can do here is we can cherry pick their top winning products, whatever has the highest demand and least competition, least amount of reviews. So to do that, we're gonna open up Jungle Scout. And I've had students inside the Econ Product Zero course get really good results with using this method to find products. So what we can do here is we can sort by highest monthly revenue, and we're gonna look at the ones with the highest revenue, but the least amount of reviews or rating. It looks like this time around, these are kind of up and down. So their top sellers doing 8K a month in revenue, 5K, 3K a month in revenue. But I can see this two piece nonstick steel reinforced silicone baking sheet is only doing around 700 a month in revenue, but we, as you notice, but it looks like they only launched a few months ago and they only have two reviews. So this is a way you can look at some of their top sellers and reverse engineer what they're selling possibly put your own spin on it. And literally this would be something that's like already a pre-built niche, a pre-built store. You can look at each individual product they're selling and it'd be very easy for you to launch your own spin on similar products. I hope this video helped. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you in the next video.